Do you wanna speed up your video editing? One of the best ways is by improving your hard drive speed. And in this video, I'm gonna be sharing a few tips on the best hard drives for video editing and storing your media and video files. Coming up. Hey, what's up, Sean here with Think Media, bringing you the best tips and tools for building your influence with online video. And on this channel, we do a lot of strategy videos as well as tech gear reviews and tip videos just like this one. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. And hey, at any point during the video, check out show notes and links in the description below. I'll list out the various gear that I'm using as well as any other resources and things mentioned in the video. Let's jump into the tips. So I'm super pumped because Western Digital is sponsoring this video. And Western Digital, of course, is one of the leading brands in this space. And I've been using their products for decades, literally, whether that's PC builds or my laptops. And they've always worked out great for me. And lately, I've been using the WD Blue drives in my setup. So when it comes to video editing, the organization and the storage of your media files is very important. Everything from your workflow all the way down to your hard drives and storage solution and having multiple and how they work together. And every piece actually matters and can improve the performance of your video edit, especially if you start doing 4K or you wanna do some After Effects or Cinema, uh, Cinema 4D motion graphics or even just adding effects to your footage. You probably can relate if you've been editing, you you know when things slow down or when they don't go that fast. And believe it or not, hard drives play a big role in that. Solid state drives, on the other hand, are typically smaller. The capacity usually is not as high and they usually are more expensive. However, what's been cool is that the price of solid state drives has been coming down. Their capacity has been going up. And this WD Blue Line is actually a super affordable solution for solid state drives. Now, I actually use a combination of solid state drives, traditional hard drives, and even external drives inside of my video editing PC build. But in order to get the fastest speed possible, I've been using SSD drives for the video editing and actually working projects. And I've been using traditional hard drives, which again are much larger and more affordable for just storing and backing up footage. And here's my biggest tip about workflow and having the maximum speed for video editing. I actually use three drives. The first drive is the operating system. So I'm running Windows on a PC here, and that's installed on an SSD drive that runs Windows, it runs Adobe software and Adobe Premiere, which I edit off of, and it is dedicated just to software and the operating system. The second drive is dedicated just to the working files and the temp files from the video editing software. And so that's something that you can go into your settings and actually assign where the files, when you're actually editing, are stored. And having those separate from your operating system speeds up video editing. But then there's actually a third solid state drive for the media files themselves. So if we go and do a shoot and shoot a bunch of 4K footage, all that footage will go on that drive. Then that footage will be per pulled into the video editing software and then Premiere will create those temp files and whatnot. And then the software is run off a separate drive. So if you want to increase your speed of video editing, consider a three drive workflow. And this can even work in a mobile situation. My laptop has an, a drive with the OS installed. It has a data drive that's separate. And I could also use an external as well. And that could be the third drive. And staying organized with a workflow like that, allowing each drive to handle each of those pieces of the workflow will produce massive results that if you've never tried it before, I would love to hear how it goes for you. And for that three drive workflow, I've been using one of these Western Digital Blue one terabyte SSD drives for my video files and my media files. Now, I love this drive because I've been doing a lot of tests with it and it's introduced some really cool technology. And one of those things is it's called 3D NAND. Now, what that basically means is that in the past, they were trying to pack all this data in solid state drives, but it was horizontal. It was as if it was ramblers in a neighborhood. It was a bunch of one story houses. And what happened was they just kept trying to get them closer to closer and closer together. And there wasn't very many gaps between, if you will, the memory modules or whatever you would call them. And thus, uh, there would be some faults and some errors and sometimes the drives wouldn't perform. So what 3D NAND started to do was essentially made skyscrapers, made towers. And so instead of just going horizontal, they started going vertical with that data storage. So that actually means a lot of things for performance. 
First of all, this drive is blazing fast. On paper, it's rated for 560 megabytes per second read time and 530 write time. Now, I actually benchmarked it and it came in at 488.58 on the read and 433 on the write. Still incredibly fast. And of course, there's all kinds of different things that potentially go into those actual speeds. And so when you compare that to a traditional hard drive, I benchmarked one recently and it came in at about 123 megabytes a second read time and 130 write time. This solid state drive is three to four times faster than like a traditional hard drive. So you're gonna experience crazy speed for everything. Additionally, that 3D NAND technology helps the drive consume 25% less power than other drives. Now, if you use that in like a PC build or some kind of a desktop setup, that's not as important. But if you were to use this in a laptop, everything counts when it comes to that power draw. So that can give you some battery life extension. This drive also has industry leading mean time to failure, which is how drives are measured, basically how long they're gonna last. And it also has several air correcting technologies. So the bottom line is it's super reliable. Now these Western Digital Blue SSD drives come in a couple different sizes. There's a 250 gigabyte version, a 500 gigabyte version, one terabyte, and also two terabytes. This is the one terabyte version. And at the time of shooting this video, this comes in at right around $280 here in the US. Of course, check out current prices on the various sizes. It's cheaper if you go smaller and it's more expensive if you go larger. And actually another popular use case for solid state drives is gaming systems. In fact, after this video, this particular drive is gonna go in my PS4 Pro. I've heard killer reports from people saying that the games run faster and load faster if you use a solid state drive, especially one that has performance like this. But that's it for my three drive solid state workflow, but let's talk about a couple other drives that I use in my setup. When I'm done with working on a project, but I don't necessarily wanna move the files to a full archival backup solution, I'll go to an internal drive, as we mentioned, that is a traditional hard drive, because you can get larger sizes for cheaper prices. And actually, the drive inside of this computer over here is also a Western Digital Blue drive, but it is a hybrid four terabyte drive. And hybrid means it's a combination between a traditional drive with some SSD features. And what's cool about that is you still get speed, you still get performance. It's not as fast as a solid state drive, but again, the speed doesn't matter as much. I just like having a little bit of speed for transfer and things like that. And so that four terabyte drive that lives inside of that computer comes in at right around $109 here in the US on Newegg at the time of shooting this video. And so you can see the price discrepancy there but there's also the speed discrepancy. And so when things are just used for backup or archival, speed doesn't matter as much. So I definitely recommend internal drives that are much more affordable with the larger sizes, which are typically found in traditional hard drives, not SSDs. And then finally, for additional backups and archiving your video files and your media files, I like to use external hard drives. Now I actually did a whole video about that and I'll link that up on the YouTube card as well as the description below. But I recently purchased a brand new drive that I'm super pumped about that's from Western Digital as well. Now this guy right here is a 20 terabyte external hard drive. Pretty crazy because it fits in a relatively small package for the size. And what's cool about this is you could use all 20 data stripped and that basically means it's a RAID array that'll make both drives run basically twice as fast. Inside of here is traditional hard drives, not SSDs. But when they're rated together, you'll have 20 terabytes of space, blazing speed, or if you wanna use it for backup, you can actually mirror the drives so that one is backing up the data and the other drive is backing up that drive. So you could have a lot of peace of mind if you just want a drive to offload your footage to and uh, know that it's backed up. And what's cool about some of these new drives is that you have um, USB 3.0 plugs here, but also USB-C plug on here as well with blazing fast speeds for a lot of modern technology. And so definitely a piece that I'm excited to integrate into my workflow. I've been using external hard drives and I'm excited to kind of consolidate them and move to this one soon. So there you go, that's kind of an overview of my video editing storage and workflow. And definitely check out the YouTube description where I will list out some additional details and product specifics of the exact things that I use 
in my setup. Question of the day, what are your tips when it comes to video editing workflow and what are you currently using for storage, for backup, for how you're editing your content? Let me know in the comment section below and remember, some of the best tips and feedback come from you, the Think Media community. So definitely connect with everybody in the comment section. So thanks for checking out this video. Subscribe for more videos just like this. And if you wanna check out some other videos in our video editing series, just click or tap the screen right there. For another video from Think Media, just click or tap the screen right there. Until next time, Think Media is bringing you the best tips and tools for building your influence with online video. Keep crushing it, and we will talk soon.